Thanks, Lakshmi. Hello, everyone. Um, thank you so much for uh, being here. I'm really excited to share my experience. Um, well, since Lakshmi just gave a short kind of uh, introduction about myself, I can skip that, that slide. So today I'll be talking about uh, recapture, AI, and self-driving cars. Right, those are the three themes kind of um, be with me for the last five years or so. So I joined Lyft four months ago from Google, 12 years in Google. So I did many, many things in Google. Uh, the things I'm most proud of is this. Let me try. Recaptcha. Right. So what is Recaptcha? Recaptcha is this kind of squiggling letter on the internet many years ago that you have to transcribe, proof that you're human, not a robot. Right. The mission of Recaptcha is keep the web organic and free of spam. So this is what it looks like roughly 10 years ago. Right? Um, the purpose, as I said before, is twisting a letter that you know, the computers cannot um, recognize, but human can. So while we're doing that, we say, why don't we put another letter, uh, another word in there coming from the books? We twist it the same way as we did with the other word, so that human will transcribe both of them, not knowing which one we know, which one we don't know. So in this way, if they answer the known word correctly, we think they digitize the other word uh, successfully as well. So that's a very good plan until it doesn't work anymore. Right. So this is what looks like uh, roughly five years ago, because the events of computer vision, um, the OCR technology advances, so that machines actually did much better job uh, recognizing our twisted letters. So we have to twist it harder and harder until it looked like this. So you can give it a try. Don't hurt your eyes. So we tried it on our known human users, right? Say, how many of them, how many of you can actually transcribe it correctly? And it turns out only 33% of them. Right? So in the same time, that's roughly 2013-ish, uh, Google had, uh, had a, a big announcement of uh, brain models, right? deep learning. The first time we're able to train a model that can recognize cats and dogs from the YouTube video. So we trained a similar model to recognize our uh, distorted text, and it can solve at 99.8%, so three times better than human, almost perfect. Right? So that's the time we know that you know, we cannot continue the distortion path anymore. So a year later, we launched, um, so end of 2014, we launched the Recapture V2. We call it, I'm not a robot recapture or no capture recapture. So what it does is, you know, when presented in a page, there's a check box, you go and click on it. If we think you're a human, you got this check directly. And behind the scenes, this is what happens. So it turns out when you land it on the page, um, there's several signals that's transmitted, uh, helping us to kind of do a risk analysis. All right, so this is analysis from a pre-classification. If we think you're most likely a human, you get a free pass. If you look like a bot, you get a bot, right? But in between, we give you challenges and no longer distorted text. Uh, we give you image recognition challenge or uh, segmentation kind of challenge. Those are the ones that are still considered hard, relative hard for computer vision over the last five years. So with that, you know, we launched, and within two years, we reached our milestone, and over two million websites uh, had seven-day activities with us. Um, some of the, the stats is really old. Um, you know, after two years after the launch, one-third of the time, we're serving no capture, um, so human get a free pass. And we did a comparison of all among the known humans, right? Um, if we give them a simple distorted text versus this one, what's their pass rate? Um, so it turns out, you know, human pass rate significantly increased. And much shorter uh, solving time, because now it's one click. So with the time saved, we actually save the internet users 100,000 hours every day, right? So that's a lot of hours they spend on the internet watching cats and dog videos. 
And it's also hard for bots. So it turns out we look at the, you know, did a deep analysis of the bots' behavior. Most of the bots that get challenged, they abandon it. So this is their uh, abort rate. When they see a challenge, less than 5% of the time they're going to try. And we look at, you know, we served over 56 languages across 240 countries. I, um, the pass rate for the old text distortion looks like this. Red meaning, you know, didn't pass. Green is yes, passed. From V1 to V2, it's a very green world. So to conclude, reCAPTCHA makes it easy for human. But you know, there's several utilities of reCAPTCHA, right? So we started with digitizing books. Every day we digitize thousands of books. And we also use it to build maps. Right? So we serve them this kind of uh, text transcription uh, tasks from our street view imagery. And it helps to improve AI. So these are the two examples from um, you know, the image classification and segmentation tasks. And as we serving more of this, you know, there's always something that we didn't know there, so we use it for crowdsourcing. So we're generating tens of millions of labels every day and use it to train our um, internal models so that while our cars are out there driving around collecting imagery, we can immediately recognize uh, the street signs and things like that. So reCAPTCHA has been serving as kind of a wing vein from AI. So many times, you know, after we launched the V2, right, it got a lot of uh, internet attention. And we got a lot of attention from researchers, too. So they're writing to us and say, you know, we, we train our own AI. Now I can, you know, defeat your reCAPTCHA. And to the point where we have to tell them that, you know, relax, our own model can do it much, much better, too. So reCAPTCHA is no longer relying on that challenge itself to tell you you're bots or human. It's more on the back end uh, analysis and the risk scores. So with that, we actually um, thought, you know, worked very hard on removing the challenge altogether. And uh, two years ago, we launched um, an invisible CAPTCHA. So you basically place this logo on your website, no interactions needed. And we're gonna report to the website a risk score, how likely that you're a human, and the website can take action based on that. So as I say, and I spend a lot of time you know, working on reCAPTCHA and really get me excited about you know, how this is kind of going to way where AI is improving, right? And then also having another team who is building AI tra training data set for uh, Google, various uh, projects. So from my many years of uh, working in this field, um, I should see how the AI data is kind of progressing. In the very beginning, right, we all know that, you know, deep learning is like a rocket engine and data is the fuel. So lots of them, quantity is the key metrics in there. And until we realize, you know, quality matters a lot, right, because, you know, trash in, trash out. And to the point where we realize not only this two, it's actually diversity is very important to us. Uh, one of the example I put in here, is if you go and search for professors on Google Image, right? This is what you get today. You know, you have a, a woman facing there, a couple of other ones there. But you know, uh, one year ago when I did this search, is everybody looks like Einstein showing on this first page, right? And then you know, Google started realizing that this is a problem we need to solve, and we need to really looking hard into the data diversity. So with that, I. I didn't have that slide, but uh, so we had a data collection effort, and we ask user to download the app, and you can self kind of opt in your picture and your career. So I did the very first picture in there and say, this is what a self software engineer look like. Right. So I hope he's going to show up in the image search sometime. <laughs> So, you know, after all this, right, uh, um, my passion is always following um, AI and applied machine learning, and that's where it you know, leads me into here with Lyft autonomous driving. So when people are talking about autonomous driving, right, we're very excited about that car moving around, and if you think about it, it's, this is a hardware, it's a car, and then there's a bunch of software tell the car to move, right? But it's not only that. Hardware plus software can only make the car move, 
but it's really the data that make it move outside of the parking lot into the real world. Right, so for example, you know, to get out there, you need a very precise HD map telling you where the stop sign is, where the traffic light is, and you also need to have a deep understanding of what you see, the dynamic objects in there, and how do they move, right? and what pattern, and those kind of things. So in summary, I want to say you know, it's actually data that drives that car. So with that, I'm done. And Yes, oh, one slide. <laughs> I was told that I can do this. We are hiring. Um, I said Level 5 is basically Lyft Autonomous Driving Division. We're based in Palo Alto, and we are hiring. So if you're interested, talk to me. I'll be you know, sending around here after the talk. Thanks.